Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching it on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and pick it up at, uh, I don't know, Daniel, what we got, Daniel? What we picking it up at? Anak, what you got? Tosh, what you, what, what you working with? Tashi Cole. Young Z Kai, where we where, where we gonna start? He was like, he got poop. He was like, he's darn bad. He doesn't like you pooping right now. Hey. Nobody got nothing for me. Goodness gracious. Let's pick up the judges. Judges? No, man, we gotta do something to get us primed up. You know what I mean? Get a warm. They got warm up. Son, can't you jump right into judges? All right, let's just jump right into judges. Judges chapter thirteen, verse one. <laughs> Y'all took too long. I mean, you could have threw out a random book, a number. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? Just like, ah, ah. Don't, don't I mean, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm like. What's it? Is it Habakkuk? All right, Habakkuk. You know what I'm saying? Nah, give me a number. One and two. Three, right? Three. One through three. What we got? All right, Habakkuk, chapter two. I need another number. Habakkuk, chapter two. All right, it ain't no 34. Oh, Give me something 18. lower. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. I don't even know if it's 18. Mm -hmm. Why to be a 34? Habakkuk doesn't go to 34, right? Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk kind of short. Yeah. Habakkuk. It's Habakkuk chapter 2. We're going to look for verse 18 if you got it. All right. It's Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. What's the last verse? Last verse. Probably 19, 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. Let me see if we can get out of it. Mm, that thing always good. The whole book good, ain't it? That's how that thing works, you know what I'm saying? I'm making, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It just make it look like I'm doing something. You can, you can just turn to anything in this thing. That thing always going to work out. <laughs> That's like the funniest one out right now, bro. The won't he do it? That's like hilarious. What profit? What profit is the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it? Mm -hmm. The molten image and the teacher of lies. Mm -hmm. That the maker of his work trusts is therein to make dumb idols. Right? He asking the question. You make these darn praying hands. You make these darn crosses. You make these darn doves and fishes. He trying to tell you what does it profit you that you would make it? What do you get? What does it do for you? Ain't nothing but a dumb idol, right? You make your beautiful. I mean, you just got Mexican Jesus hanging right on top of that darn cross. We we in the mall. You see the, the dude? We at the Jesus feet. I mean, that thing glittering, glistening gold thing, probably even bigger than all outdoor. But that, you look at it. That's a nice looking Mexican Jesus on that thing. You look at it, it's like for what profit? What does it do for him? Does he look down at it and be like, okay, you know what? I feel better now. I believe more, right? The most high guy, you know, he's going to look out for me now because I'm wearing his son on my chest. Ain't it darn son? You need to cut this stuff out, right? But that's the type of stuff that get us in our mind, right? In our mind, that's what, that, that's what we look at. The book tells us very clearly, don't make nothing that crawl on the ground. Nothing that fly, none of the, nothing after the fowl that's in the air that get your doves, all right? He said nothing in the water underneath, underneath that gets some fishes. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That thing done. What you gonna do? I think he good down telling you all the commandments and what you can and can't do. What do you have left? Nothing. All you gotta do is line up after that. 
He tried to make it easy for you. He tried to tell you, you these are all the things you can't do. After you get done with all the stuff you can't do, then it's just like, okay, you rump sprinkle on this side. You do whatever you want to do. Right? As long as you're not doing old things, you are free to do whatever you want. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people try to make it seem like everything is a sin. No. Book ain't never said everything was a sin. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that feel questionable to people. Right? Because tradition has told them, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, that's a sin. Stuff ain't no darn sin. Did the book say it was a sin? And a sin. No, you ain't supposed to be gambling. Is that another? No, the book ain't never told you you ain't supposed to gamble. I choose not to gamble. Right? Mm -hmm. It is shaky territory, right? You mess around and gamble, then you turn greed. Right? right? You get the line. You know what I'm saying? You spend all your money going to your wallet. I got robbed. You know what I'm talking about? So that's, I mean, it'll pull you into that type of stuff, right. but in and of itself, no. not a sin. Yeah, you go drop 20 on black real quick, lose your money, and walk out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't done it before. I ain't, I ain't done it before. Yeah, yeah, I ain't done it before. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I don't good. know if it's 20. I might did five. You know what I'm saying? I always, I was always cheap. You know I, I don't play that. I get a tip at work, you know, give me a couple dollars. You know what I'm saying? I my whole thing is if I play five and then win five, I keep playing. But if I play five and I lose any of that five, I'm oh, yeah, we good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I can't afford it. I'm broke. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford that thing. Right. But at the end of the day, what you look at, I mean, you have to be able to tell people the truth. A lot of times, telling people the truth is uncomfortable. Because you you looking at, you look, you look think we think about our own struggles. It's like, man, man, if I gambled, I know that I would become addicted to it and start lying and cheating and having, you know, having greed problems, and that's going to send me to hell. So now I don't want to tell other people. You know what I'm saying? I, I admit I got one like that too. Like we, you know what I'm saying? Like we, like, I don't know. You, you ain't about to see me preaching no sermon about we can be used for medicinal purposes. Like, yeah, technically it can, right? Technically, you know what I'm saying? If it's medicine, you can't. But my, my hang up is, you know what it is? My hang up is these people gonna be like, oh no, nah, this is your medicine. You know what I'm saying? And now you got this person sick. So that's my hang up. I get it. But. They definitely do it. Sure. They definitely don't do it. So that's why I don't promote the idea. What I am going to tell you is, don't your butt be intoxicated in that cup of weed. Mm -hmm. So you tell the truth of the word without lying on it. You know what I'm saying? Without going too far. Without without putting your own feelings into it. Mm -hmm. I'll withhold some information. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, listen, you know what I'm saying? That's your business. You know what I'm saying? You just, but listen, I'll tell you what the books say. I'll tell you what it say don't do. Right? Then I'll tell you how to be righteous. Everything in between that, you covered. That's what the book is about. It's just teaching us how to live righteously, how to turn away from sin. Ain't no other way to do it. Right? Let's go ahead and uh, go to uh, Judges chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 1. Let's see what the book talking about. So last week, we talked a little bit about uh, Judges chapter 12, where we had, uh, what was the name? Jephthah. Yeah, Jephthah. And Jephthah was, uh, Jephthah was in a position where, you know what I'm saying, he fought for the country. After he fought for the country, the Ephraimites was looking at him like, man, why you didn't call us? And he was like, man, first of all, I did call you. You know what I'm saying? And then he asked him that question. You know, Jephthah good for asking that question when it's time to scrap. He's like, oh, so what's your beef with me? You know what I'm saying? After that, Jephthah ready to fire off. So they start having a war. Jephthah kicked their butt. Then after that, he is like, all right, anybody from Ephraim that crossed this border, we're going to make them pronounce a word. All right, and if he pronounced that thing wrong, cause you, he knew they had an accent, you know, then it's on. And we talked a little bit about how that's how the Most High God worked. He split up our languages to cause division. You know what I'm saying? Way back in the Tower of Babel, and in the same way as he split up our languages, he did that with religion. You know what I'm saying? Different cultures, different groups of people. He split up the understanding of religion. So now I speak this religion one way. You speak this religion one way. You got the Catholic Church. It off from the Catholic Church, it divided into a million other places, right? At one time, the Catholic Church was almost darn unified. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody was darn Catholics. But then after that, you see what the Most High God do. Okay, let me light y'all butts up, right? He split them up. Then you got Protestants, you got Anabaptists, you got all these different, all these different groups that offshoot from Catholicism, right? Because the Most High God looking like, man, I ain't about to let these people be unified. He told, he told you like, man, best around to do it, do everything they imagine. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. Zip. That's how I like the matter. You just like, look at that. Ah, I don't know what y'all talking about. Right? But that's how that thing work out. So now we go to Judges chapter 13. We're going to learn about a new uh, new one of our judges. 
Notice, so far, if we look into our word, the only judge we came about that looked like he actually knew some word was who? Jephthah. Jephthah. Other than that, it didn't really look like these judges knew some word. Right? Maybe you can say Gideon. Maybe Gideon. Right? Gideon, Gideon was like, look, man, our fathers told us about these things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What happened to him? Why we don't see the miracles no more? Right? So it looked like he remembered a little bit of word. But Jephthah, Jephthah looked like he knew some word. It looked like he knew what he was talking about. Right? So far, though, that's really like the only two that you can make a case for. The rest of them just moseying along. And you'll see here, we're going to read about Samson. It's going to be the same type of idea. Right? Samson, he don't know, he don't know no darn word. You know what I'm saying? He don't talk about the word at all. Right? Watch this. <laughs> And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Uh -huh. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah. Uh -huh. And his wife was barren and bare not. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Mm -hmm. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Mm -hmm. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and mm -hmm. no razor shall come on his head. He said, no what? Razor shall come on his head. Why would he say that? For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Give me no, uh, Numbers chapter 6. Let's learn about a Nazarite. He said the child will be a Nazarite from the, from the womb. Right? He said don't ever put a, a razor on his head. All right. You see, Most High God already had a plan for the young man. Right from the womb, Most High God was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I got something for him. Notice, Most High God had something for him, had a plan for him. We're going to read, he never knew a lick of word. I'm trying to tell you all the time, Most High God will use you right for his purpose. As soon as he gets done with you, all right, well, that's it. You still got to get judged by the same law that we all got to get judged by. No matter what he used you for. This Lord, is Numbers chapter 6, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, mm -hmm. When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, uh -huh. he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine. He said, vinegar. No wine, no strong drink. And you can't even drink what? No vinegar of wine. I got that. Or vinegar of strong drink. Okay. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, mm -hmm. nor eat moist grapes or dry. Mm -hmm. All the day. So don't even have a gra grape, right? Don't even have a grape. You you got to separate yourself. Don't have a grape. He tried to tell you, I don't want you getting anywhere near anything that could turn into some alcohol. Mm. Right? Keep going. In all the days of his separation, shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree? You can't eat if it come from a vine. Don't touch it. Right? Keep going. From the kernels even to the husk. Mm -hmm. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. So as long as you take this vow, guess what you can't do? Cut your hair. Can't cut your hair. That thing got to grow out. Until the days be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. In the which he separates himself unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair, of the hair of his Shall let the what? The locks of the hair of his hair grow. 100% he grew. Right. You know what I'm talking about? 100% Hebrew. Look at these people just sit here. They get in there and tell us, you know what I'm saying, what we dealing with. They, you know what they're going to put in, a, in, a, in our place? You know what they're going to put in our place? Some white person that's speaking English. Why dost thou? You know what I'm saying? In a darn play. With a darn dress on. You know what I'm saying? They got the Roman attire. They dress them up like Romans. Right? Dress them up like darn Romans. And then give them an English accent. That don't even make sense by itself. They give him an English accent, dress him up as Romans, and then they call him our people, whole book trying to talk about, listen, he had locks in his hair. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. You know what I'm saying? The only thing they got is Goldilocks. And if they ain't no even lock. <laughs> but where they got that thing from? Keep all, going. All the days that he separates himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother. For you hear that? Brother or his sister when they die because of the consecration of his God is upon his head. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, let's just say I want to separate myself as a Nazarite. First of all, I can't eat nothing from the vine. No drinks, no food, nothing from the vine, right? Then after that, I got to make sure that no razor touch my head. This male or female, right? So that thing just got to grow. All that, you know what I'm saying? Well, I just need my ends and split ends. Yep, no, nah, you got to keep them things right where they are. You know what I'm saying? Let them things split, right? Do you keep that thing going? Okay, 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 I'm still going, I'm still going. 
Then at the end of the day, he tell you, you can't make yourself unclean for anybody. Thank you. That's a tough, that's, look, it's a tough vow. There's not no easy vow. It's a tough vow. You mean to tell me my husband, my, my wife, my husband died? My dad, my mom, my little brother, my sister, somebody died. I can't go. I can't make myself unclean. Can't touch them. They got the viewing. You know what you got to do? No, I catch y'all at the reception. Right? I catch y'all at celebration of life. You know what I'm saying? I can't even, you know what I mean? I just can't even do it. Right? I can't be around a dead body. That's, that's unclean. All right. Let's see. Keep going. I mean, I mean, fall dead right in front of you. Rest of us, you know, first thing we gonna do is we gonna try to help, try, you know what I mean? And that's right, gotta be like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, you know what I'm saying? Somebody come help. It's a tough vow. It's not an easy thing. Let's think about it. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing, and on the seventh day shall he shave it. Right? So you look at it. Hey, Alila. Uh, if you look at it, he said, if that thing, you break that thing at any point, right? And at any point, you sit there and you stop, dead body fall, and you you unclean because of it, cut your hair off. That thing over. Right? At that point, cut your hair off. Right? That's book. Watch this. And on the eighth day, he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons mm -hmm. to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm-hmm. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make an atonement for him that he sinned by the dead and shall hollow his head that same day. All right. The two turtle doves. Now watch yeah. this. Matthew 2. It's Matthew chapter 2. I think I'm on word, verse 19. We read this, all right? You know where I'm going, right, Daniel? Oh, we already read it. It's Matthew chapter 2. Give me verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Mm -hmm. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. He came to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Arche Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father Herod, right. he was afraid to go there. He didn't want to go to Judah. So I wonder where the man would have went. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Uh huh. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. He came and dwelt in, dwelt in a city called what? Nazareth. Oh, for what reason? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called the Nazarene. You know when it was spoken by the prophets? When the angel of the Lord showed up to uh, to uh, the mother of Samson and said, "You're gonna have a baby, and don't put no razor on his head. He shall be a Nazarene." She'll be a Nazarite. Right? That's when the prophet spoke on it. Right? So now we look at it, we like, oh, I thought that was about Samson. Yeah, you thought a whole lot of stuff in this book was about something. Whole book testify who? Give me Jay, uh, John chapter 5, verses, uh, what I want, Daniel? John chapter 5, what, verse 29? 19, 29? It's John chapter 5. Good gracious. It gotta be like 29. 25 maybe? Yeah, Gospel of John. This is Gospel of John, chapter 5. I think I want 25 maybe. That it? What you looking for? Uh, uh, search the script. Twenty-nine. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Yeah. So it's uh, it's John chapter five, verse thirty-nine. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Uh huh. And they are they which testify of me. Uh huh. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. 
Uh huh. I receive not honor from men, but uh -huh. I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. Uh huh. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Okay. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. I got that. I come in my Father's name. Y'all ain't, ain't paying attention to me. Search the scriptures. It's all there. It's talking about me. I'm coming to you in my Father's name. In other words, I'm coming to you telling me what my pop said. I ain't saying nothing different. Somebody come speaking their own stuff. They come running their own darn mouth. Get what you gonna do? Oh man, that that boy speaks the truth. Tell me I ain't what happened. We opened up the book on they butts. I mean, it's just pure book. Oh man, no, brother. Let these brother come out. No, nah, man, you see, you know what I'm saying? Jesus wasn't born of a virgin. Book clearly said he was. But guess what? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. It did make a whole lot of sense that you're going to hell. I do. It do make some sense. All right. Uh, grab a whole book test fire of them. Uh, grab uh, where we leave off. Uh, five. Uh, no, I don't want to go back to Judges yet. We got some work to do. Let's go to Amos. Amos chapter two. Give me verse ten. We'll talk about the Nazarites a little bit. All right. Yo, she was saying he gonna have to be a Nazarite. He has to fulfill the book. Well, Lazarus was dead. Why you think he yelled right. come out? Yeah. Yeah, because he can't judge him. And he told him at the Passover, he said, I ain't going to drink this until we in the kingdom. Right. 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 Why should we be down there struggling with some kids? Better whoop some butt. All right. Tell me, you got to whoop the butt. That butt got to be whooped. That thing ain't going to be around. That thing, I just don't see no other way around. That thing got to be whooped. This is uh, Amos chapter 2. Give me verse 10. Let me see what we're working with. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. Oh, that's real nice. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. He raised up our sons for what? Prophets and young men, Nazarites. And what did we do to them, Lord? Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord? Okay. But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink. You did. We did what to the Nazarites? Ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink. And then what? And commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. Oh, my good. We told the prophets to shut up. And then when the Nazarites was around, we gave them wine. Why would that be a bad thing? The Nazarites can't drink no wine. Book just told us they can't have no darn wine. That don't make no sense. Right? This is Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, this is Mark chapter five, uh, 15, verse 1. Mark chapter 15, verse 1. Watch this. Now we got to read about Yahweh Shua. You know what I mean? I mean, Samson. And straightway in the morning, the chief priest held the consolation with the elders and scribes uh -huh. and the whole council and bound Yahushua and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. They did what to Yahushua? Bound him and delivered him to Pilate. Oh, hold on. Let me go back. Let's talk about Samson, I mean. Now, nah, I didn't mean to talk about Yahushua. I want to talk about Samson. This is the uh, judges. They did what to him now? Uh, they bound him and delivered him to Pilate. Okay, this is uh, Judges. Give me chapter 15 this time. Chapter 15, verse 9. It's Judges, chapter 15, verse 9. I mean, because they bound Samson and took him to Pilate. I mean, not Samson. They bound the Messiah and took him to Pilate. Okay. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. Uh-huh. And the men of Judah said, why are you come up against us? Uh-huh. And they answered, to bind Samson. To, to do what to Samson? To bind Samson while we come up. Uh-oh. To do to him as he has done to us. Oh. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock. How many? 3,000. Oh, remember that number. 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock. Men of who? Judah. Okay, and they went to the top of the what? The rock, Etam. Okay. And said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? Uh huh. What is this that you have done unto us? So they went to. Notice who they went to. They went to Samson, right? So men of who? Judah. How many of them? Three thousand. Went to Samson, and they was like, "Listen, bro. They all the same people, right? Bro, listen. Let me out. Don't you know that these people at us? 
Why don't you? They, they gonna say it for you. Look, I ain't gotta say nothing. Watch it. What is this that you have done unto us? Uh huh. And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto them. Uh huh. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. Okay. And Samson said to them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Okay. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. That sound familiar? Surely we will not kill thee. What that sound like to y'all? I mean, because I remember it was a night right after Passover, or right after they had the Passover meal, at least. You know what I'm saying? It was before the Passover, but you know what I'm saying? Right after they ate, you know what I'm saying? Y'all sure was just chilling. And then all of a sudden, somebody came up, and it was a whole lot of people that came up with weapons. Right? And he got betrayed. Simulated how the people of Judah, 3,000 to be exact, went to Samson and betrayed him. And he was like, all right, go ahead and take me. And he let him take it. You remember when Yahushua, they started to fight to try to get the people off of Yahushua? Yahushua was like, put your stuff away. What you talking about? He like, you coming out here like you, you know what I'm saying, coming at a thief or a murderer. Like, wait, you know what I'm saying, we good? And he let him take him. That's amazing. I don't know who we talking about right now. Let's grab, uh, let's grab, uh, let's go back to Mark 15. I just want to grab that real quick. It's Mark chapter 15. Verse one. Matter of fact, we can skip past one. Go to uh, go to verse uh, twenty. This is Mark fifteen, verse twenty. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Okay. And they compelled one of Simon's uh, Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, uh -huh. the father of the of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. They okay, so they compelled him to come, and they wanted him to bear his cross. Uh oh, let's see what else. And they bring him unto the place of Golgotha. Which they brought him where? In the place of Golgotha, which is being interpreted. What does it mean? The place of a skull. The place of a what? A skull. Uh oh, let's talk about it. It's Judges chapter sixteen. Give me verse one. They put him on the place of a skull. It's Judges chapter 16. Give me verse 1. They're going to make some quick work real quick. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went in unto her. Uh-huh. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come here. Uh-huh. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. Uh huh. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all. Uh huh. And put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. That's right. And then he carried them to the top of the hill that was before Hebron. Watch this. And it. it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Okay. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see where his great strength lies. Yep. And by what means we may prevail against him. We are trying to look for his him. weakness, right? Because this man, he's out here doing some crazy. We're trying to find this man's weakness. Let's hear about it. And we may bind him to afflict him. We just want to bind him to it. We just want to capture the man. Okay, keep going. And we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. Okay, so they paid the woman off. Let's see what we got. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, where your strength lies and where you might be bound to afflict thee. Mm -hmm. And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green widths, that were never dry, then shall I be weak and as uh, and be as another man. So Samson lied to her. He was like, yeah, listen, you, you bar me with this, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. I'll be weak. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what happens, though. So. And the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wits, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Mm -hmm. Now there were men lying in wait, aiding her with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Mm -hmm. And he break the whist and, uh, as a thread. He broke right up out of them things. You know what I'm saying? Tricked her, but broke right up out. But you know what he doing? He trying to test her. Like, okay, let's see what you, let's see if you really about me or not. You know what I'm saying? But you know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Brother can't help themselves. They keep going back. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Here. And, as, uh, and he broke the whips as a thread of tow and broken when it touches the fire. Mm -hmm. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, where your mighty, where thou might be bound. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Mm -hmm. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, 
The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Mm -hmm. And there were liars in wait, aiding, abiding in the chamber. Uh -huh. And he break them from off his arms like a thread. Okay. And Delilah said to Samson, up until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me where you're mighty, where you might be bound. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with a web, and she fastened it with a pen and said unto him, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. Mm -hmm. And he woke out of his sleep and went away with the pen and the, uh, of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? Right. So he lied to her all the time. Now she looking like she trying to set him up because you know she got that payoff. She like, how could you say you love me? Your heart is not with me. You wouldn't lie to me. Obviously, he looking like every time I tell you something, that thing suddenly happens. And these boys after me. Right, over all this span of time, I done told you three different things. And each one of them things happened right after I told you. Seemed like a setup to me. The way the Bible tells you, you know what I'm saying, it kind of make it seem like it just happened back to back. But you look at it, this is likely over a span of time. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, like he telling her this one time and it happened the next night. It probably, you know what I'm saying, he told her. And all of a sudden, they worked and set that thing up. Then it happened. You know, so he's looking, he's putting the thing together like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Samson, he's a little, a little slow, but he wasn't that stupid. Right? Let's see what happened. Thou hast mocked me these three times and has not told me where thy great strength lies. Mm -hmm. And came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul... So now you see press him daily. You can see time is passing. So now he nag, she nagging him. Because he liked the girl. He ain't got rid of her yet. Right? So now she nagging him. Okay, let's hear about it. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God for my mm. mother's So you tell him, this is where my strength comes from. Samson was strong. You know what I'm saying? He boy couldn't mess with the boy. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to figure out a way. Like, we can't mess with him. You know what I'm saying? We need something else. So right, they're trying to figure out how do we get past his strength? Like, how do we do it? All right, let's hear about it. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. All right. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Uh -huh. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Uh -huh. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. Mm -hmm. and, she be and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Mm -hmm. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Uh -huh. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as the other times before and shake, shake myself. Yep. And he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. Mm -hmm. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with the fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Albeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. And the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and rejoice. For they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God has delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. All right, so they got Samson now. They got him captured. Now watch this. And it came to pass. Hold on. Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 15, verse 23. Mark chapter 15, verse 23. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Mm -hmm. My blood of the New Testament is which is what? Shed for many. My blood is shed for many, he said. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Yahshua said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Now watch this, Judges chapter 15, verse 18. And he was sore a thirst and called he on the said Lord. he was sore a thirst and he called on the Lord he did what and said thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant and now shall I die for thirst right all into the hands of the uncircumcised this is Samson he just got done fighting beating a whole bunch of people up what did he beat him up with 
Yeah. Where's that at? 17. 17? Give me verse 17. It came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. What does Ramath Lehi mean? It's gold, right? Don't you say it? Mm. Y'all remember Galgatha? What does that mean? Place of the scrolls. He beat their head with a jawbone. That's a donkey skull. All right? Then he called that thing, what is it, Lameth Rehi? Lameth Lehi. Place of the skulls. All right? Keep going. And he was sore athirst and called to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance into the hand of your servant, and now I shall die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. Mm -hmm. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. His, so hold on. Water came out, and when he when he drunk, his spirit it was revived. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. That's really nice. I mean, he was thirsty. Then water came out. All right, grab uh, John for me. Do I want John? No, I don't want John. Give me uh, what verse is that you just left off on? Nineteen. Nineteen. Give me twenty. Let me see what verse twenty says. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistine 20 years. Okay, give me Judges 16, 22. And then we'll go to Matthew. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Mm hmm. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice for they said our God has delivered Samson our enemy into our hands. Mm -hmm. And when the people saw him they praised their God for they said our God has delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country mm -hmm. which slew many of us. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said call for Samson that he may make us sport. Mm -hmm. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and okay. he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him They by set the him hand, between what? The pillars. What was y'all sure set between? Uh, two, two to five men. All right? Book said that he would be numbered amongst the sinners. All right? Y'all sure had, he, he had one cross on him on this side, one cross on this side. Just like him. He said between pillars. You know what I'm saying? One on this side, one on this side. Let's see what happens. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house stands, mm -hmm. that I may lean upon them. Mm -hmm. Now the house was full of men and women, and the lords of the Philistines were there. Mm -hmm. There were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Mm -hmm. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee. Mm -hmm. And strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, mm -hmm. O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Mm -hmm. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, mm -hmm. and on which it was borne up, and of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, said, Samson had to be like, I don't know, something like this, right? I mean, one with the right hand and one with his left. So he had to be like something, I don't know, it's probably something like this. I don't know what that could be talking about. Let's see. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he he said, let me what? Die with the Philistines. So, I mean, it sounds like he about to give his life or something. I don't know, let's see. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were therein. So he pushed them things over. The whole thing fell over him and killed him. All right? So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Mm. Grab uh, Matthew for me. This is Matthew chapter 28. This is Matthew chapter 28. Give me verse 27. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this, of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's not what I was looking for. Give me 27, verse. What's the last verse? Like 50 something? 66. 66. Give me 27, verse 
45 maybe? No, from the six hour there was darkness over yeah, all. Yeah, that's what I want. I think. Let me see. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. What does that mean? That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, Samson, you remember when Samson was all tired up, he was like, Lord, just give me the strength. You know what I'm saying? So I can do this one more time. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua was saying the same thing, like, man, why you forsake me? Most like God took Samson's power away. All right, let's see everybody. Let's, let's keep going. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calls for Elijah. Mm -hmm. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge. and They took a what? Took a sponge and filled it with vinegar. They gave him, they gave him what? And put it on a reed and gave him to drink. Wait a minute. What was the Nazarite not supposed to have? Vinegar. vinegar. Anything from the vine. Even vinegar. And they gave the man vinegar. What happened after that? And straightway, oh, and then the rest. I wonder why that had to happen. And we just read it. Right? Samson cut his hair. What happened if you cut your hair? And the vow's over. That's the end of the vow. So guess what? Before Yahushua died, his vow had to be ended. And then we read in Amos. You remember Amos? He said, what they do to the, to the prophets? I mean, to the uh, Nazarites? He gave them wine to drink. He gave them wine to drink. Right? He had to fulfill the book. All right. Give him some vinegar. Let's hear about it. We already saw when it was time to drink the wine, what did the man tell us? I ain't going to drink it until I drink it. We just read it, right? Yeah. This is my blood. I'm not going to drink it, though, until I drink it anew. He get right up on the cross. You see, he ain't mess with no wine. Very clear about that. I don't mess with that. But he get right on that cross. All right. Let me tell you. We, ain't, we all read, right? We've been doing our reading. Yeah. So y'all remember the first miracle that John said he did? What was it? He turned water to wine. Yeah. He turned water into what? Wine. But who turned the water into wine? Yeah, Oh, maybe we got to get him. It's John chapter 2. Is it 2? It's John chapter 2. Help me find it, Daniel. I want to say it's... John chapter 2, somewhere in the beginning. Maybe uh, verse uh, 8, maybe. It might not be 2, though. So I could be wrong about that. Yes, yeah, 2. It's 2, what verse? Uh, 15, maybe? Uh, 15. Wait. Uh, 9. It's John chapter 2, verse 9. Watch this. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not where. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. No. We got to go before that. We'll go ahead and start at verse 2. It's John chapter 2, verse 2. And both Yahshua was called and his disciples to the marriage. Okay. Yes. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua said unto them, They have no wine. Uh huh. And Yahshua said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? That thing ain't got nothing to do with me. He trying to let her know. That has nothing to do with me. But that's his mama. So watch this. My hour is not yet come. Okay. His mother said unto What do you mean by my hour is not yet come? Uh, it's not time for me to die yet. I can't drink this until I drink it with you anew. She, he like, man, listen, it's not the hour for this. But she insists. So guess what he did? That's his mama. You got, you know what I'm saying? Got to do what his mama said. Let's hear about it. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Okay. And there were set there six water pots of stone. So there were six water pots of stone. Let's hear about how Yahushua picked them up. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing uh -huh. two or three firkins apiece. Okay. And Yahshua said unto them, fill the water pots with water. Who? He told, said unto who? Whoever he was talking to, the disciples. The servants. She said, listen, here goes some servants. Do whatever he tell you to do. Okay. Go fill them up. He ain't touch no darn water or no darn wine. Why? Watch this. Keep going. And they filled them up to the brim. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. He gave him instruction. Go ahead and draw it out. Go give it to the governor of the feast. And they bear. He didn't touch no darn wine. He ain't had nothing to darn do with it. He just told you, what does it have to do with me? Listen, let me just tell you what to do. Go ahead, take the water. You know what I'm saying? No, you know what I'm saying? Pull it out. All right, pick it up. Go take it to the master of the feast. Now, it'll be all right. 
Then we already read Master of the Feet. He drank that day. He was like, listen, honestly, I'm going to tell you the truth. Usually, people wait until the end. You know what I'm saying? People will give you the good stuff at the beginning. They water that thing down. You know what I'm saying? Because you already drunk at that point. It's like, yeah, get everybody drunk with the good stuff. Then we just start watering that thing down. They think they still drinking. They so drunk, they don't know what they drinking now. Right? Be it like, man, y'all say the good stuff for the end. Right? Imagine the people like, yeah. Y'all, she was like, man, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. That's all y'all, y'all good. He can't touch no wine. That don't make no sense. Right? Go back. Let's see. This is, uh, what are we looking for? Matthew chapter 27. 27, 45. 45? That's where we at now? Or that's what we already read? 48. 48? So yeah, uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 48. All right? They gave the man vinegar. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him the drink. Uh huh. The rest said, Let it be. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Uh huh. Y'all sure when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Okay, so he killed himself, right? He died. All right, keep going. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top of the bottom. Uh huh. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Uh huh. And the graves were opened and many bodies of saints which slept arose. This ain't the one I wanted, but there was one. For the vinegar, he said, I thirst. Yeah, that's Luke. Might have been Luke. John. John? He said, he said, I thirst. Let's see if we can find that thing real quick. You remember Samson, when he got done killing him with that jawbone, he was like, man, look, I thirst. And all of a sudden, most high God found a little spot for him, and then water came out. Right? Let's see if John got it. John 1928. Okay, this is uh, John chapter 19, verse 28. Yeah. See what we're working with here. After this, Yahshua, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said... That the what might be fulfilled? Scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I wonder what scripture he was fulfilling. And let's see what happened after he said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. Oh. And they filled God. the sponge with vinegar. And, and they put it filled on, the sponge upon hyssop with vinegar. And put it to his mouth. And they gave him some hyssop. And they put it to his mouth. That's a whole other thing. I mean, we can we can dig into that hyssop too. That's a whole other thing. You know what I'm saying? We get that, you know, say we get that next Sunday. You know what I'm talking about? You know, Pastor, you say you get that next Sunday. You know what I'm saying? He dig into that hyssop too. But they put the vinegar on there. Put it to his mouth. They thought they had helping him. They gave him Nazarite's vinegar. Mm, mm, mm. Keep going. When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Okay. And the Jews therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, mm -hmm. for that Sabbath day was a high day, mm -hmm. and he saw Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Uh huh. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Yahshua and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. Mm -hmm. but one of the soldiers with the well, One of the soldiers, what did that one soldier do? Because, I mean, Samson was thirsty. Oh, yeah. Samson was thirsty. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Most High God, he was like, I thirst. Then after that, you know what the Most High God did, Daniel? He did the, uh, he opened up the, uh, the jaws of the water. Here. And what came, what came out of it? Okay, let's hear about it. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. I don't know what this could be talking about. I don't know how, I don't know if we talking about Samson or y'all Shua. I mean, I don't know who we talking about at this point. That thing is crazy. Whole book testified to man. How you gonna get past whole book testified to man? I mean, how many how many people from Judah came and hunted down Samson? How many? Give me Acts. Give me Acts chapter two. We read all this, right? It's Acts chapter 2. What verse uh, What verse I want? Acts chapter 2, maybe 32, uh, maybe? I feel like it's 30-something. Acts chapter 2, verse 30, maybe 2. This is quick work. You know what I'm saying? Do something quick. We ain't got to stay here all night tonight. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 41. I appreciate you. 
Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Uh huh. And the same day there were added unto them about three thousand. How many? Three thousand. Most of God always gonna make that thing right. He said, "Okay, yeah, three thousand captured, y'all sure? Okay, we gonna turn three thousand back. I mean, Samson. They captured Samson, and then we gonna turn them back, right?" He always going to do that thing on both sides. Like, okay, don't worry about it. Same 3,000. Don't even worry about it. We're going to clean that thing right on up. They got baptized that day in the water. Right? The cleansing water. Just like the water that came from his side. Just like the water that came out of Samson's uh, rock. Right? Jawbone. It didn't come out of no jawbone, did it? It came out of the bone. Yeah, Played it came out of the bone. Being in a bone in the water. Back. It came out of the bone? Yeah. I thought it came out the rock. No. Which one you think? It came out of the rock and bone. Just pick one. <laughs> but God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. Spirit came again. And he revived. What do you think happened when the spirit fell out on these people? I mean, they, they, got, they got baptized in the what? In the water. And what came again? Can't beat that. Can't beat that. We still might have to check that translation. That jaw, it might actually mean stone. <laughs> <laughs> Grab for me, um, uh, I'm gonna do a little freestyle before we get out of here. Grab, uh, grab uh, Galatians chapter uh, five. All right, we look at the book, it all comes down. All the stuff that we look at, it's just to give us testimony that the Most High God is real. All right? Ain't nobody care. Ain't nobody make this stuff up. Ain't nobody put this stuff together. These people ain't even catching this. People can't catch this stuff in a million years. A million years they'll be reading this book and they can't catch it. They don't say nothing about me or T. All I say is something about it. Most High God got it. He give it to who he want. All right? It's just, it's just him trying to show you. Can't nobody sit here and make this book up. I don't care what you say. You can run your mouth all you want. Nobody sit here and made this book up. Ain't no white man gave this to the seed of the world. Somebody put all this. These lazy white people. You gonna tell me they put all that together just to enslave a few black people? They ain't just build their own country. Right, that's not what to say. Tell me what slaves put the Bible together for because we know they ain't doing it. Either way you look at it, the Negro put it together. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna, I mean, how you, I just want to tell me how it happened. Tell me how it happened. Who put it together for him? You know, you know the white man sit here and put all this book together just to enslave a few black people? That's crazy. That don't even make no sense. All right? But that's what they have us believe. We come here to get knowledge, right? Only way you're going to get knowledge, you got to learn to stop. Eli, stop. It's Galatians chapter 5. Give me verse 21. 19. It's Galatians chapter 5. Give me verse 19. What does the book say? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these. Okay. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. I got that. Remember, we started off talking about what? Idolatry. Call that thing out. Then it said Abaca. Anaka said two. Tasha said, I don't know what time. What did you say? 18. That's when that thing lined it right up. What was the first thing it said? Man, they make these idols of no profit. What profit is them when they make these idols? They ain't lined up. You think the most high God ain't gonna come full circle? Every time he is. Idolatry, what else? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. What's witchcraft? Give me an example. Horoscope. I mean real world. Horoscope. Mm. What's that horoscope? What is a horoscope? Okay. We talked about that before. Things to worship like the stars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That magical stuff. You know what I'm saying? The spirits is giving you energy. You know what I'm saying? Telling you how you going to be. Ooh, girl, he Aquarius. Mm-mm. I'm a Sagittarius. Mm-mm. Yeah, you keep playing with that stuff you want to. Say your butt right, right, right to darn hell. Keep going. Hatred. Hatred. Variance. Variance. Emulations. Emulation. That's jealousy. Wrath. Wrath. 
strife. Strife. Sedition. No. Sedition, that's division. Heresies. Heresies. What's heresies? Uh, denomination. Mm, you ever see somebody talking about, oh no, see, that's not my denomination. Even if you had a non even you had a non denominational church, right? That thing's still denomination. Remember, you used to go to that non denominational thing? We thought that thing, we was like, we might have found something. You know what I'm saying? That thing said non denominational. Because we ain't smart enough to know. You know what I'm saying? We gotta stay away from all these, <coughs> all these foolish people. So we, we thought we might have found something. Non denomination, that's what we looking for. We start going that thing, them people just the same. They still jump around, acting crazy. You know what I'm saying? Not, not obeying the book. At the end of the day, you can't call yourself non-denominational. You can't call yourself Baptist. You can't call yourself anything, all these things. You know what you call yourself? Disciple of the Most High God. Disciple of the Messiah. Right? Ain't that what the book called me? Why would I call myself anything else? I just hear about it. I mean, I, let's just, I, mean, I just want to be fair to everybody. This is Acts chapter 11. We're going to hold what we got. We're coming right back here. This is Acts chapter 11. Give me verse... Where is it at? Acts chapter 11. Uh, give me the last verse in Acts chapter 11, Jim. It's going to come right after the gospel. <coughs> what am I, like 49? You don't know the 49. Uh, 30? 20? 30 is the last one. 30. Okay, so give me give me Acts chapter eleven. What is it? Twenty one? Can't be too far down. Twenty nine. Twenty nine? No, it ain't twenty nine. Okay. First time in Antioch. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, you looking for? Uh... We ain't read this yet. We about to read this. One. See that man? Uh, 26. 26. This is uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Watch this. And when they had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And to, unto Antioch, right? And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Uh huh. And taught much people. Okay. And the and the disciples were. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The who? The disciples. So the book is calling them what? Disciples. Okay. The disciples were first what? We're called Christians first in Antioch. So what are they? Disciples. Okay, and then they were called what? Christians. But that don't change what they are, right? No. But maybe it do though. Maybe they like start being called Christians first here, and then from that point on they were called Christians. I mean, let's just see. Let's keep reading. Cause we would expect this was the first time they got called Christians. We'd expect from now on they'd be called Christians then, right? Let's hear about it. Let's keep going. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Okay. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, okay. and signified by the Spirit that uh -huh. there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, okay. which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Uh huh. Then the disciples... The who? The disciples... Why didn't they say Christians? Because he told you the disciples were called Christians. He didn't say nothing about they called themselves Christians. He never called ourselves no darn Christian. We wouldn't even know how to pronounce nothing like that. I ain't make no darn sense. Right? Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. Book said heresies is a sin. You get to call yourself and separate yourself under some name or under some banner that the most high died, God didn't create for you. That's a sin. That's a heresy. And even if they were called Christians at this time, they're still way before Muhammad came on the scene with that Muslim stuff. Hey, that thing, that thing ain't even in that conversation. <laughs> they be like, Bro, well, Muslims was here before. Like, you know what I'm saying? That <laughs> thing ain't even in the conversation. They be trying to use that voodoo on us, though. You know what I'm saying? You know what they're saying? This is their argument. See, Muslim means what? Submit to God, right? So, technically, Moses was a Muslim because he submitted to God. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you what Moses was. Moses, according to the book, was an Israelite. Moses, according to the book, was a servant of the Most High God. Right? Let's talk about what the book say. Don't, don't try to use no, no, you know what I'm saying, reverse psychology, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to redact what it already say and change. No, nah, we good. No, nah, you can say Muslim mean whatever it want. I can tell you a whole lot of stuff that mean like something nice, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, your butt going to hell if you don't obey what the book say. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to talk about what, you, what your language say. I don't want to talk about, I just want to talk. It was a man having an argument about 
Allah is just God in a different language. I feel you. I'm, I'm fine with that. You call him Allah if you want to. I don't want to argue with you about Allah. You know what I want to argue with you about? What are you obeying? Who are you obeying? Because if you obey Allah and you're doing everything the book say, I ain't got no issue with you. Say Allah all you want. As long as you serve people right, you serve the Messiah. But I'm going to sit here and argue with you about your language, folks. You know what I will argue with you about? I probably ain't going to argue with you about that either. But you living wrong. Right? You don't line up with the book. You sit here and you, you run down Yahushua as if, oh, well, he's just another prophet. Watch your darn mouth. What's wrong with you? Well, you lost your darn mind talking about another darn prophet. Whole book testified. Give me revelation. If Revelation, what I want, two? I mean, 22? 21, maybe? The spirit of prophecy? I want to say 21. Give me Revelation 21, 9, if this is right. The testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. I want to say Revelations 21, somewhere up the top, middle ish area. I feel like it gotta be 21. I don't feel like it's 22. All right, Dan, you check 22. Why he checked 21? It probably gonna be 22. Watch. Check around like verse nine. You know what I'm saying? A little bit before, a little bit after. It. Took for something to say it like in. spirit of prophecy. You know what I'm saying? The testimony of y'all sure is the spirit of prophecy is what it should say. Popping up? I think definitely in one of them chapters now. I can't be going that crazy. This is not in, I don't think it's in 22. Wait. It might be. Right. 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 They make up all types of stuff about, our, about the most high God. Meanwhile, they steal our stuff. They're going to steal our stuff and sell it back to us, just like the Gentile. Just like the American. Steal our stuff and sell it back to us. Make us pay for it. Yeah, go ahead and look it up on the phone. Now I want to get that thing. I think it's definitely in 22 or 21. If that's not, if it's not in 22 or 21. 22 the last chapter, right? Mm. Yeah, I think it gotta be in 22 or 21. That's crazy. Uh, 21 oh, the gates of the apostles. You found it? Y'all can call this in Revelation 19. What? Revelation 19. What? Verse 10. <laughs> Goodness gracious. 19? Yeah, 19. 19 verse what? 10. What? God moved it. <laughs> this is Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. Uh huh. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahushua. That's right. Worship God. For the testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. He said the testimony of Yahushua is what? The spirit of prophecy. So now how are you going to tell me that he's just another prophet? When the spirit of prophecy, if you are a prophet, you testify unto the man. We just witnessed that. The prerequisite of being a prophet is to testify to the man. And you're going to tell me he a prophet? Oh, okay. All right. This is John chapter 5. Let's go back because I think y'all might have missed something. So the man, they gonna tell us he's just another prophet, which if we believe a book, that means that he gotta be testifying of himself, right? This is John chapter five. What did we read? 20, 29? 39 was it? So if we read 39, I want before that, I want 29 this time. 30, 29? Yeah, I think. 
and shall come forth. They have done good unto the resurrection of life, mm -hmm. and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Yep. Keep going. I can of my own self do nothing. As okay. I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Okay. If I bear witness of myself, my he said, if I what? Bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. <laughs> man, just talk. it don't matter how you try to come at this thing. The man is gonna line you up. The book is gonna line you up. Man, just told you how I'm gonna testify myself. If I testify myself, my witness is not true. So tell me how you gonna be another prophet. You can't be a prophet unless you got the testimony of Yahushua. And the man just told you he can't witness to himself. Cause otherwise you do that, it's not true. So who got a witness to him? Prophets. Let's read it. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Okay, I wonder what his name is. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. He called John the greatest back, uh, the, the greatest uh, uh, prophet, didn't he? Greatest man ever born of a woman. But I received not my, I received not. Hold on, we can't move past that too quick. We gonna stop what we got here. Grab Matthew chapter eleven. Tell me on what verse. I'm tired of these people just telling these lies. It ain't easy to it. Hey, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? You don't know no darn book. You got to throw the book out. got to keep reading that darn cord on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with you? Bring that stuff over here. I'll light that butt up. Tell me some lies. It's easy to light up some lies. When you got the truth, stuff is incongruent. Matthew chapter 11, what, verse 10? For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger. That's it? That's what I want? What is it, verse 9 I want? Yeah. All right. It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 9. We'll do 8. All right, it's Matthew chapter 11, verse 8. But what did, what went ye out to see? Mm -hmm. A man clothed in soft raiment? Mm -hmm. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Mm -hmm. But what went ye out for to see? Mm -hmm. A prophet? Yes. A what? A prophet? Yes. Okay, let's hear about this prophet. I say Y'all sure just agree. He said, what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, you went to go see a prophet. Let's hear about it. And more than a prophet. More than just a prophet? Let's hear about it. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, mm -hmm. which shall prepare thy way before thee. Mm -hmm. Really, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So now we know John the Baptist was not only a prophet, but the greatest born of women, right? So let's go back. You know what I'm saying? Where are we at? This is John. What? John 5, 29 Okay, this is John chapter 5, verse 33. He sent unto John and bear witness unto the and he bear witness unto the truth. So John, a prophet, bear witness unto the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear about next. But I received not testimony from man. Uh huh. But these things I say that ye might be saved. Okay. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Uh huh. But I he said, I'm not even gonna take his test. He's like, he is testifying of me. He is a prophet, of course. But I'm not even gonna take his testimony. Let's keep going. But I have greater witnesses than, than that of John. Uh huh. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So he's saying, the works I do, the miracles I do. That testifies of me. So all the miracles that he did were written where? In the script, in the book. All right, by prophets. All right, let's keep going. And the Father himself which has sent me, he bore, he bore witness of me. How? You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. He said, you've never heard his voice. You've never seen his shape. So how do you know what the Most High God testifying? Keep going. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom you he has sent him ye believe not. Uh oh. Search the scriptures. Search the what? Scriptures. Uh oh. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. And all of them is filled with hot what? Prophets. Testifying to Yahushua. Sure. We look at it, the man ain't lying to you. No matter how you twist and turn, that thing gonna line up. And if it don't line up, then you're a sinner. 
You look at the book and that thing don't line up, then you gonna end up being a sinner unless you figure it out. That's how that thing go. It's gonna line up. It ain't no way. It ain't no other way around it. So you can't sit here and tell me you're another prophet. For me, that don't work. You can talk to a Christian with that mess. Maybe they'd be like, okay, well, I accept. Some Christians get excited. And they hear, there's a lot of Christians, they get excited when they hear Farrakhan jump on there and say, no, we, we live by the teachings of Jesus. They hear him say something like that. They'd be like, okay, now Farrakhan came to the senses. I'll listen to that stuff. I'd be like, uh-huh, keep going. You know what I'm saying? Please say more. You know what I'm saying? Listen, go ahead and reveal. Reveal, keep going. Eventually, he's going to let that thing sin. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that Jesus is a great prophet. Okay, yeah, that's just not cutting it for me. Great prophet? Okay. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, he's not just a great prophet. He's that prophet. Right? He's that prophet. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You know what I'm saying? They try to call, uh, what is his name? Muhammad, you know what I'm saying? They try to call him the last prophet. How the book gonna call him that prophet and, you know what I'm saying, we gonna call Muhammad the, the last prophet? Whole book testify against these people. Guess what they gonna keep doing? Just moseying along in their madness. Alright? I pray the most I got, you know what I'm saying, get some of these people to revelation though. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is just one, one thing to just click. Also, I gotta snatch you right up out of that foolishness. Alright? He did it for us. He did it for us. We is just a fool. Man. I can speak, well, I can speak for us. You know what I'm saying? We is just a fool. You know what I'm saying? Damn, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You might have been out there just, you know, pop locking your way on the way, onto the most high God the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So us uh, though, we is out here, you know what I mean? That thing a little little rough. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the most high God. He can get these people out of it too. You know what I'm saying? We gotta keep on reminding ourselves of that thing. You know what I'm saying? We still got some friends out there. You never know. I mean, I'll be honest. Chances are slim. Now, I ain't going to sit here and try to say, chances are slim now. But that don't mean just because we know the chances are slim. That was, I mean, we're talking about gambling. Chances are slim for gambling. There's still a lot of people that get out there and gamble. As if it's like, man, I'm going to hit this next one. Ain't that what you tell yourself? That's what we got to do. We got to gamble with the most high God. Right? Oh, no, this next one, no, that thing going to be it. That's what I keep telling myself. That thing frustrating and all that, but that thing got to happen. You never know. All right? That's why we got to live in such a way. You know what I'm saying? When people see it, they be like, you know, it's, you know, it's one of the things that touched me so much. When y'all sure, when he is up there, they mocking him, making fun of him, doing all this stuff. Let's see if Elijah going to get you. You know what I'm saying? They mocking him. You know what I'm saying? That thing was nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can imagine myself probably doing the same thing. Right? But after that man died, after it was all said and done, they looked at the man like, oh, that was the son of God. Right? A lot of times we want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Like we want to be like, okay, like my best friend, like, you know what I'm saying? Like he rolled with me my whole life. And I was trying to tell him, like, yo, Marty, I need you to be like, you know what I mean? I need you to come this way. But Marty ain't listening. Marty, you know what I'm saying? Marty doing whatever he wanna do. You know what I'm saying? He just do whatever he wanna do. But I wanna see it though. But you know what it might take? It might take me being out of here. And Marty look and be like. He was faithful to the death. Like, that was my brother. I saw him. He never gave up on it. And that's what it takes. We got to have that type of heart. Right? Sometimes, you know, it feels good to see it. Right? It feels good to be like, hey, I talked to this person. And, like, look, they changed their whole life. That thing feels good. Each one of y'all. That thing feels good. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's encouraging. But at the same time, even if we don't see it, we got to be able to die for this thing. And when that happens, it's like, okay, now we can get somewhere. Now it's something we can do. All right? Any questions? Let's pray out.